What's going on everybody? Welcome back. So today we're back on Mixed Up Boss. We're going to be doing some things, getting the engine buttoned up. I've got my timing cover here, which I'm actually reusing off of the 393 that I had in Casper. I've got to knock a new seal in, put a new gasket here on the fuel pump block off plate because we're using an electric fuel pump, of course. But also, I didn't mention, but I also reused the camshaft thrust plate off of the 393 because it was a good high dollar piece, good shape. So let's get this going. And I'm also going to do the oil pump today and pick up and oil pan. Alright, so I got the new seal in here and a new gasket. This thing about kicked my butt. I don't know why it didn't want to go in, but nevertheless, it's in there. It's cleaned up. I'm reusing the hardware that I had on the 393 Windsor, including my old school timing pointer, because they didn't have billet timing pointers in 1971. And my gasket. So, yeah, let's get this going on there. The next thing we're going to do is put in our melling select oil pump and the drive shaft. Make sure that this clip is facing the top of the engine so that it'll keep you from uh, dropping the oil pump shaft into the crankcase down the road. We're going to torque the ARP bolts down 28 foot pounds using uh, red Loctite. Before I bolt this oil pan on, I want to talk a little bit about oil pans. You see, a lot of people neglect, by having a good oil pan, you are literally throwing away horsepower. The oil pan can control windage and oil drain back, and it's very important in keeping the oil in the pan near the sump where it's needed. You see, in Casper, with the old 393, I had just a stock replacement Molodon and it worked okay. But I know without a doubt that I was giving up power at the track on acceleration forces because all of that oil sloshing back to the back of the oil pan causes drag on the crankshaft. So on Mixed Up Boss, this is what we got going on here. This is a Milodon Pro Competition Pan, part number 31487. And this is kind of like a a mid-level pan if you will now this thing is not cheap I think it's close to five hundred dollars if I'm not mistaken but you can spend upwards to a thousand dollars if not more on a good custom-made steps or a good moroso but the reason why I picked this pan is because it has some features that I need for Casper the first and foremost is it's actually going to fit in the chassis with my stock front suspension on the F100. See, I'm still running the twin I-beam suspension. And that plays a big part of being able to have an oil pan that's actually going to fit. It has a built-in scraper here to scrape the windage off of the crankshaft. 
It's got little trap doors to trap the oil back here where the pickup's at on acceleration. Now, the one thing I'm not crazy about is this little miniaturized windage tray. I would like to see a full length windage tray, something a little bit closer to the crank, but it is what it is. It even has a nice kick out on this side here for the oil that is scraped off to keep it away from the crank itself. Uh, this is a really good pan. Um, you can run it up to a 4.1 inch stroke. And since we're running a four inch stroke crank and uh, mixed up boss here, this is going to work really well. So let me get the measure in my oil pump pickup and get this thing bolted on. So as you can see, we've got the oil pump uh, pickup bolted on here, we've got the measurements checked out. I would have done it on camera, but it's kind of hard filming and measuring and all that, but we're slightly over three eighths of an inch. You want to keep this as close as you can to the bottom of the pan, but not close enough to where it's not going to suck oil in the pickup. The further away, you can run the pan dry and you actually suck air, cavitation, it's just a bad deal. So we've got that done. We're gonna use a Felpro uh, one-piece gasket here. I've had really good luck with these. So I'm gonna get started to cinch this down and get the oil pan on here and get the bottom end buttoned up for good. Well guys, I've got the oil pan bolted on, got it torqued down to 15 foot pounds, which is factory spec, but I've really got to rant about something. Something that sticks in my crawl is not having the same kind of fasteners in all of the holes. You see on my 0393, I had a stainless steel ARP bolt kit, 12 point deal. So you would think that you would just be able to swap those same bolts over to the Ford Racing Boss 351 block. No. These two bolts on both sides here are different size compared to what was in the factory block. Now this is very irritating. See, that was a D4 block. This is a Ford Racing Boss block. So now I'm gonna have to go find some bolts that will match the rest of them, probably buy some. And this is gonna lead to another video down, in the, uh, down the road. And that's things that will $20 you to death when you're building a hot rod. And nine times out of 10, it's gonna be bolts. So stay tuned on that. But right now we're gonna talk about the top end and what I've gotta to do to get the heads bolted on. So let's take a look at those. Before I bolt these hammerhead performance engine head on but mixed up ball short block, I've gotta do some things to them. One of which is my fault. If you look here, you'll see that I'm getting very close to having some clearance issues with the valve spring and the head. And 
that is my fault when i ordered these heads from greg brown he didn't i didn't specify what size valve spring i was going to be running this is a 1.55 inch valve spring and he thought that i was going to be running a one and a half inch so i've got to take these things back off and clearance right around in there to accept these valve springs and so they won't be rubbing the rocker shaft boss with the valve spring so that's number one and that's my fault number two if you will remember i'm going to be running a cleveland tunnel ram on this engine now this is for my preference of having a dry intake manifold and this next thing is if you were to try to purchase these you wouldn't have to do this if you were putting them on a regular windsor but i'm going to have to drill and tap uh, a pipe size thread tap right there to allow for my water crossover so i've got to do that before i bolt the heads on and last but not least i got to knock in my freeze plugs to block that off and once i get done with those things these bad puppies will be ready to go on the short block so there you have it i've got a lot of work to do and we're going to try to get these things done asap so i've got to finish up the tunnel ram video but i can only do that once the heads are actually on the engine bolted down so that i make sure that i get the correct port alignment so until next time this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later.